This is going to confuse everybody. You guys are going to be really confused. It's another GTX 260, but it's not any GTX 260. It's a new video card from NVIDIA. And rather than giving it a new name, like the GTX 265 or the GTX 270, they named it the GTX Core. 216 and uh, this is the EVGA version so it's a pretty cool card and there's actually other versions and they all have their own name each manufacturer had their own name so I guess what happened is 4800 series came out Nvidia used to being top dog and you know AMD came out and said yo you know what's up and Intel got mad and you know Nvidia got mad sorry and those are fighting words you know and they just got at it so they released a new card now let's talk about this card because it's it's got an interesting point where it fits in in the scale of cards between the 260 and the 280. I'll show you in a second. I did a, a couple simple benchmarks to illustrate, you know, where on the totem pole it's at. And um, it's right in the middle, where, where you'd expect it to be. It's right between the 260 and the 280. But more importantly, is not within NVIDIA. It's within the whole scheme of things, because this card is faster than the 4870 in just about every game that I tested, except for a few. <clears throat> I'm actually going to refer you guys to www.hardwarecanucks.com. Yes, Canucks is in Canadians. That, they have an excellent, excellent um, review on this card with some of the best benchmarks I've seen in a while, very detailed benchmarks, I like them a lot. So, I'll show you my benchmarks and I'll show you, you'll see theirs, theirs are much more, I just did Crisis and 3D Mark Vantage to kinda show you where they're at. Now, let's talk about Core 216. What is Core 216? Well, it's 216 processing cores before you were using 192 and it had eight clusters of 24, now it has nine clusters of 24. So those are your SIMD clusters, they added more. That's pretty much all it is. They also gave you a few more uh, texturing units. So I think you had, uh, what was it before? You had 64 before and now you have 72 texturing units. So that's a nice increase as well. Everything else stayed the same. So let me show you the specs. Take a look at this, this graph right up here. As you can see, the memory, the core clock, the memory clock, the shader clock all stayed the same between the GTX 260 and the GTX 260 Core 216. Now, as you can see, the super clocked version has a nice little bump in all the frequencies. So that definitely kicked it up. This card actually outperformed the GTX 280, but not the GTX 280 for the win or the super clocked versions. So that's very interesting actually, and that's due to the higher frequencies. Um, now, also, it, of course, more importantly, it beat out the 4870. These two power connectors right here, the six pin PCIs, are gonna require a 500 watt minimum power supply. So make sure you keep that in mind. A lot of the previous cards were only 450. These are 500 and you are gonna need 36 amps on the plus 12 volt rail. So that is a, a good amount of amperage that you're gonna need, but most of you guys with modern power supplies are not gonna have any problems. Also wanna let you guys know that 3D Mark Vantage is included in the box, which is really nice. And uh, also included in the box is the EVGA or NVIDIA precision overclocking utility, which does let you increase your fan speed, your core, your shaders, and your memory clock freely. And uh, it can you know, kind of do everything in automatic where it's linked up your core and your shaders, or you can do it all manually. And pretty much if you get an artifact scanning tool, you just overclock until you start getting artifacts and that's when you're maxed out. And there's no reason to waste any time. Overclock away. All right, let me give you guys the quick rock round of the card just so you can see everything on here. You get Two DVI ports, these are dual link DVIs, 2560 by 1600 maximum resolution, so even if you've got a 30 inch, you're fine. You get the S video, which is very nice, it's a digital S video. Oddly enough, this one didn't come with a breakaway cable, but it did come with even better. Came with a DVI to HDMI, which is nice, of course it does have HDMI support. It comes with these six pin PCI Express to two Molex connectors in case you have an older power supply, and ironically enough, it has two of them. You also get a VGA to DVI adapter, and you get your audio loop cable. Oops, you want to focus? There you go. And uh, let's see. Let's show the front. You do get the nice Core 216, so that people realize that you have a Core 216 and not a regular one. Two PCI Express X6 connectors are up here. That would be why they give you two of the adapters in the box. And your SLI, pull that off goes right there. So this is an SLI ready card. If you want to do two or three, you can. And I'll tell you what, this thing is also ready for CUDA physics, uh, you know, bada boom and folding at home using the CUDA engine for uh, parallel calculation. So that stuff's all on board. Now, just to show you the totem pole, all this competition has brought up 
you know, brought upon by AT AMD versus uh, Nvidia has been fantastic for you guys. You guys are now getting a product that's cheaper, you're getting better specs, you're getting better frequencies, all your performance is increasing and it doesn't cost you guys anything. And ironically enough, I kind of get upset sometimes when, oh, Nvidia, 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 oh, AMD, 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 and everyone's like a fanboy of one side or the other. It's actually good. It, it really starts, sparks fierce competition, which lowers prices. So let's get into the benchmarks real quick. I only did Crisis and uh, 3D Mark Vantage because Hardware Canucks, our friendly Canadian guys to the north, did a nice review. But I want to show you where this thing stacks up uh, versus uh, the, two, the 260, the 264 the win, the 280, the 284 the win, and then this card, the regular version, which is what I have right here. And then I have the super clocked. Where did the super clocked go? Whatever, I have a super clocked. Anyway, uh, take a look at these benchmarks. So, taking a look, I did uh, three resolutions, 1680 by 1050. You can see there the GTX 260 came in at 33. For the win edition, which is the factory overclock, goes to 36, which does beat out the 260 Core 16, but then you see the Core 216 Superclock coming in at 38.44, which ironically enough is beating the GTX 280, which is at 37.97, but not the GTX 280 for the win at 39. So, really, really puts it in a line there, it really uh, lines them up for you as to which is which. Now, I'm gonna skip over the 1920 by 1200, but going straight to the 30 inch where nothing was really playable in Crisis anyway. Again, these are high, uh, high settings, no filters. So DX10, but well, it's actually DX9 because it's high, not very high. No anti-aliasing, no antiscopic filtering, none of that stuff. But here's where you see another interesting uh, you know, differentiation. 16.64 for the 260, 17.55 for the Core 2. The super clocked version came in even higher at 19.14. And then the 280, 19.6. So it's right next to that 280. And it's significantly cheaper. And 21.62 for the 280 for the win. So those are some pretty interesting benchmarks. Uh, let's take a look at some 3D Mark Vantage scores. Those are interesting as well. Uh, starting off with the 260 came in at 10,712. These are overall scores in performance mode. Uh, the 260 core super clocked. Check out that score, 11.8. 11,842. And then top notch, the fastest card I had at the moment was the GTX 284, the win edition, 13,450. That's a nasty score. Uh, it only did 12,5 with the non for the win. So that for the win edition is very, very overclocked. I'm sure they'll eventually come out with one uh, for the 260. But as you can tell, the 260 is a great value. And it, it's ironically enough, you see they're right between the 260 and the 280. They didn't even make this card to battle other NVIDIA. They, they made this card to battle the 4870, which it does beat in most of the games. Check out the uh, benchmarks on Hardware Canucks. Uh, what else can I tell you about this card? Uh, hang on. Uh, got it all. Oh, EVGA has been very nice to me lately. So I'm going to give you guys the reasons behind why I personally use AVGA when I'm getting NVIDIA video cards. So I want to tell you a few things. First, this card has a lifetime warranty. That's awesome. You register it on their website, they give you a lifetime warranty. If it ever breaks, they fix it. Number two, 24 seven customer support. So when you're building your computer at four in the morning and you're all cracked out on Red Bulls and you're freaking out because the thing won't post and you want to play a video game before you go to bed and you're just frustrated with life, you can call them 24 seven. That's an excellent, excellent service that they provide you. Another thing is you get a step up program which is pretty much if a new card comes out within 90 days of you purchasing it, you can step up or you can upgrade to a bigger, better card. And you only pay the difference rather than buying the whole new card and then having this used card, which you can't really sell on eBay. You can, but you're not gonna get as much as you, you, know, as you paid for it. It's, you're gonna lose money. Uh, and the final, final reason for this card, not this one in particular, but the super clock, is again, you get an extra core, extra cluster of cores, 24 extra cores, and you get a faster frequency, which is definitely gonna give you, as you saw, a higher benchmark, more frames per second in all your games. So, had to plug EVGA there. It's not commercial, it's, it's personally for me. Sorry, I hit my mic, because um, they're the best so far. I love them, I can't, can't say no to EVGA. They do a really good job, great products. If you have any questions on it, email me. I'll see you guys next time. For more information on the EVGA GeForce GTX 260 Core 216, go to CompUSA.com and type in E145-261 into the search box. Or you can always call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMP-USA.